shitload to talk about. So much. Yankees. Be great. Thunder. College football. But really, what grabs all the headlines right now, bro, is something we were talking about the other day. The NBL, you know, still letting the NBA know that they mean business. And then we end up with some young players last night that just really took over everything. Mm -hmm. Victor Wimbayama, 37 points. Scoot Henderson, 28 points, 9 assists. We're talking about the potential number one and number two draft picks playing what was billed as kind of a preseason game, but it showed up to be so much more than that, bro. Yeah, I mean, this is something that we we both are pretty excited about in general to be able to watch uh, what they've been calling um, a generational talent. And we, we hear that dropped a lot. Um, two it's kind of, of them, overused bro, right? in, in American professional sports, you know? Yeah, two of them, right? Yeah. Like, seriously, Scoot Henderson doesn't get as much attention right now mm -hmm. because he's not seven foot five. But when you watch him play, man, it's really hard to, to argue that he's anything other than. Um, you know, a player that if you want to go historical, like I think of like a Jay Williams or Jason Williams, as he was known at Duke. Yeah. Like that guy was drafted only behind who? Yao Ming, a seven yeah. foot six player. Like some of these guys are so good that like you have to go back and be like, when would they not go number one? And yeah, I mean, I'll let you talk. I'm just going to play I, some. I look at this and, and, and I say. The background of Scoot and Victor from last night. It's I mean, I feel like to me, it's a problem. And you have players this good playing in non-NBA, you know, competition because they should be allowed to be in the NBA. They're that damn good, bro. They're that damn good. Yeah, and and we've been saying for a while that the NBA needs to readjust their age limit. They need to readjust everything else like that, um, especially with everything that's been happening with far as um, money goes right now. Um, we watched uh, um, Jim um, Timmy come out and say, "Hey." I'm going to make $500,000 next year by playing at Gonzaga. So now there's all this money that's in college hoops, that's in G League, that these guys are making now. You have to go out now as an NBA and readjust everything so that these younger players have at least an option to come into the league at a younger age, play one year in G League, by drafted by a team, play a year in G League, mm -hmm. and then go play on the NBA. Like, yeah. That needs to be what we're talking about because the reality is, is that you know, seeing these two uh, 18-year-olds, almost 19-year-olds play against each other, it's like, I mean, these guys would be starting on most teams in the NBA. Yeah, and I mean, Scoot, to me, like, especially since he played G League last year and then coming back and playing this year. Is, is Scoot better than Jaden Ivey? Yes. Is Scoot better than Cade Cunningham? Well, I, yes, but I would say this. I understand why people want to be pa more patient with Cade at this point and not just give it up. But if you see this dunk, he j takes off a step inside the free throw line. Yeah. Cocks it all the way back. And when you watch it from the other angle, he's at the rim so fast, he could have done it from a step further back. So, I mean, as generational player, like you said, a generational talent, wh what do you, where do you think he ranks as far as athlete, scorer, um, just – straight up baller where do you think he ranks as far as guys that are 18 years old that came into the league pound for pound the best player in the history of the league i really think, think so man i think for really? yeah because you look at him you're talking about um like does he have that signature move like Allen iverson no but i look at a player who has Allen iverson's like level of ability to dominate a game hmm. um on top of that, he's actually a true point guard instead of a shooting guard in a point guard's body, right? Sure. So I think his, he'll play a little bit better in the modern game. It makes um, sense. And Iverson would fit. Um, he can shoot the ball from behind the arc. And he's, like, if you talk about players who, like, either get to the rim or shoot the three, like, he's really good. But then you add that elbow jump shot, like, he kind of sure. looks like Chris Paul out there. Like, And yeah. he's proven that he can finish up against seven foot four guys, seven foot five guys, many, you know? So. How many small like point guards that are under you know six six or whatever? How many players under six five maybe have really gone straight to the NBA? You know what I mean? It's 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 not necessarily yeah. the traditional route, and so I don't think it's necessarily no. like um, a whole bunch of people were comparing him to 
But I do think I've, I, I, it's clear if he was in college basketball, he'd be the best player. Oh, yeah. I mean, if he was in G League, he'd be the best player. If he was in the NBA, he'd be considered a, a top 20 player right now. Yeah, he he would get everybody, and he will get everybody excited about those whole like twenty five under twenty five lists. But yeah. he might be number one on that list right now. Yeah, I, I mean, I I don't, I don't know. I well, just because of his his upside. If you give him three years to develop, like we're talking about a true all star, like, and you're talking about him being maybe twenty one years old and being an all star. Like, yeah, that, that's how many players in history. You're talking about a, a really small handful. And it kind of gets your mind running. And and honestly, if he was playing this year, he might be an all star. Yeah, no, I I think you're right. I think that this is it's going to be interesting to see how he matures. And and it's come into the the whole debate, Mark. And, and this is the way it's going to be. I think for a while, is you know we, we've talked about you know as we're watching right here him play for uh, he's playing for a French team. Am I, am I correct right there? Yeah, Victor. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he's playing for a, a team that I believe is is near where he grew up. I'm not 100 percent sure. I need to check these things out before I say them. Probably, but I, you know, watching the game, I heard some things being said, and I just don't remember which player they're talking about. But Victor, I'll, you know, throwing this really took over late in the game. Like, yeah, and, and they the were down quarter, by like double just, digits at halftime, and then Victor like went crazy. Yeah, this was this was just showing what he could do as an athlete, as a player, and especially in the fourth quarter. But I think if you're looking at this in general and you're assessing the players here, I, I, I think it's it's safe to say is that nobody's ever seen a player um, like Victor's caliber. And the fact that you're seeing him play here, it, it brings back to what Mark and I have been talking about for a while. Like, where do we, if we had children, if we had kids, where would we want them to go play? Where would we want them to go learn how to play the modern NBA basketball if our child was a star, an 18-year-old, 19-year-old kid that was going to be in the NBA, where would we want them to go play their year before the NBA? And we've gone back and forth about the French League. They have some great um, youth organizations. We've talked about um, Australia, New Zealand. Um, we've talked about, um, you know, obviously the NBL. There's great leagues in um, um uh, the Spanish league and, and so on and so forth, the, the um, European league, they have great teams, right, guys? But when push comes to shove, for pound for pound, like we like to say around here, is there is no better league, in my opinion, of teaching NBA basketball than the NBL. And when you're seeing a player like Victor, you're saying, oh, great, look at what he can do against the G League Ignite. But if you're looking at G League Ignite versus NBL, right, Obviously, the NBL is a much better league than the G League. So, and would you tell Scoot he should go to the um, to NBL? If you yes, were, yeah, yes, yeah, I would tell Scoot. I would tell any eighteen year old player that's an elite player to go there because, yes, G League play is going to right get there. you the minutes and teach you how to play the game. But the one thing it's not going to teach you is how to be a man out there. Yeah. And that's something the NBL teaches you is you're playing against full grown fucking men, pushing your buttons, throwing you around. And that's what they need. Like the, the G league has good defense and stuff like that. But the reality is, is if you're comparing leagues and comparing what you can learn in the NBL versus the G league, it's no contest. And the same is for college for me. Uh, I would rather my kids go to the G league than go to college at this point, because I know that the G leagues, again, going to teach them the right, steps for the the nba i'm not saying college is a bad bad way of going but i am saying that college should be a little bit lower on the list than everything else and you're seeing what we're seeing here and you're saying oh this is great but when push comes to shove mark and this is what i get back to with these guys is you don't know how they're going to play until they get that man-to-man -man contact god that sounds so dirty um but it's true though. But you know what I'm saying? Like that physical, rough and, and tough and throwing them around. You don't know how they're going to play in the NBA until you see that. But if they play in the NBL, you know that that's going to translate. You know it. Because yeah. of the style they're teaching them how to play is very similar. It's very rough. It's very in your face. And I, I have to say is, for me, you look at Josh Giddy, you look at LaMelo Ball as the two young point guards coming up from this league, and, and I say this by with all due respect to all the other point guards in the league, but those two point guards, as far as um, young point guards in the league, those are the two of the five point guards that everybody circles and says, this is the next generation of point guards.
That's two of the five right there, and they come from the NBL. And that's no, that's not a mistake by any stretch of the imagination. It was a mistake that LeVar Ball decided to stick his son in the NBL for a year. You know, like he knew exactly what the NBL was going to teach him. And this can go back down to Dave Simmons when he stuck Ben in there, Ben Simmons and in, in, in playing and, and stuff like that. Like this is designed, like this league is designed to teach you. Uh, and whether you only play in the youth league and you never get to the professional um, side, like Josh Giddy played for uh, the Melbourne Tigers in the youth league, and then he switched over to the 36ers in the adult league or the professional league. Like, this is the stuff that that teaches you. Like, they, they man, the way the NBL does it is the proper way. And I get excited about any opportunity that we see to have a player that is a top-tier player go to the NBL. And, and you know, we will – in future episodes, talk about some of the highlighted players of the coming up years that we want to see go to the NBL and some rumors that we want to throw out there too. But the reality is, is that when push comes to shove, if I'm a dad and I'm a professional athlete and I'm saying my son can go anywhere he wants to play basketball, where would I help him lean towards? It's not college. It's not G League. It's the NBL. I know he's going to get taken care of. I know his his... Uh, the way they play basketball is going to be good for him, and they're going to teach him how to play a man sport that is very similar to the way the NBA is played now. So that's what I would say. So you mentioned somebody in there. Um, let's talk about him. How much do you think Lamella Ball opened the floodgates as far as, like, players? Because, I mean, yeah, you could say Ben Simmons, but this idea of um, taking a year – and, by the way, we, we, a player we didn't mention is Terrence Ferguson, who did that yeah. from the U.S. Yeah. and went to the NBL. Um, somebody the Thunder drafted, but like, I feel like for for real, Lamelo Ball made it like, okay, this is you can do this and come into the NBA better prepared than you would have been by dicking around in the G League. Yeah, I mean, I think of Ball as being a great example. If Ball had gone to college, bro, mm -hmm. like he would have probably flunked out got in trouble for having sex with everybody on campus. Taking right? money when he shouldn't have. And right? all these other sh shit. Right. What's that? What's that? Uh, being being well, a college student get you in man, trouble right? For, you couldn't get in trouble for it now, but back then he would have gotten sure. in trouble for taking endorsement deals, right? Like Exactly. Would, and then my, my, when push comes to shove, right, is having a, a you know a, a child, a wild child like um, LaMelo is, and you uh, I'm all there. I'm, I'm, I'm all for it, what he's doing and, and how he's um, handling his life right now. Um, but having somebody like that and putting him in, in a place that's going to teach him professional habits. And we've talked a lot about that with, you know, the thunder podcast is what's professional habits, like how to have those professional habits. And you see somebody like Lamella ball, who's truly learning how to have professional habits in the NBL, because if he had gone to college, if he had gone to G league, right. It wouldn't have been the same type of discipline and, and understanding of what it's going to be like. He got an education that way. And that's why it's important when you're seeing these young men like Little Mello Ball come through and they're more of a man they were when they went there, right? Yeah. And then you're seeing players like Josh Giddy that that's just changing the name of the game. I and mean, look what he did the other night, man. Like, was it 12, uh, 12 point or 14 points, whatever, 12 points. Um, 12 rebounds and, or, uh, yeah. And nine assists, man. Yeah. Like borderline triple double. And he did that in 24 or 25 minutes. And like, that's what we've been saying. Like you asked me in a podcast before he said, ask, you know, how many triple dubs do you think triple doubles do you think, uh, Giddy's going to get in the first? Yeah. yeah games? That's, that's my favorite question, dude. I love yeah. the question. And I, I said four because he knows how to score more. And if this is, this is what we're going to get from Josh Mark. Yeah, but remember, I mean, he's going to be he's going to be a twenty year old that said, averages a triple double. I said, be cautious, bro. I said, be cautious because everything that happens in preseason can either get you overexcited or too depressed. <laughs> so I'm with you, but it's like you just have to like you have to recognize. Yes, he has the skill set. He can go out there and pick up ten rebounds and ten assists. But and it now comes to the seemingly NBL. 10 points easily, but he's got to knock down that three because, like you said, he had 14 points, but he knocked down two three-pointers. So that's really the key to the triple-doubles is that three-point yeah. shot. You're right. And, you know, that's why we have Coach England there, you know. And, I listen, it just gets back to 
what the NBL has taught Josh Giddy and why it's so important that we, we see this improvement with Josh Giddy. We see this improvement with Lamella Ball. Um, you know, we can go down the list of guys that have, have started their careers off in the NBL and come through the, um, through, uh, the system. So I don't know, man, I, I, I'm a huge fan of what's happening. Ozman Jang is my, you know, big question mark right there of like, will he be good for the NBL? I, and I, I saw him play the other night, man. Yeah. I don't think he's going to go down to the G league. I don't think so either. He should not ever step foot in that G league. He's too NBA ready, man. Crazy. He's too NBA ready. And it's it's kind of crazy because, like, he's more NBA ready. I feel like than some of other uh, other players that we have on that team. And it's interesting because, like, if I'm looking at Baisley or Poku versus Jang, I'm like I'm giving more minutes to Jang right now because I need to know what he can do. And is he going to be a better player than Baisley and Poku, which I'm going to have to pay Baisley, or I'm going to have to pay Poku in a year? So I need to figure out where the where they stack up to comparatively yeah and I, I understand you can look at it and be like well he didn't necessarily have a great game so it's easy to it's say what he well, showed man yeah it's 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 the talent that he's that he's proving that he has it's the level of understanding it's where he's at and the, the spots on the floor right you know like all this other stuff that jang's doing that is it's so like spectacular you're like okay okay like you know, with young players, and you know, you're pulling up the stats right now for the Thunder, so I'm glad you're doing this. Um, you know, with with players, they they kind of like stand around; they don't really know what to do, right? Yeah. Well, pull up Jang's defensive rebounds real fast. Pull up a a, a view of his defensive rebounds. It doesn't matter which one; just all of them are the same. Because I want to show you this: what he does so incredibly well, and why it's important to have somebody like Jang on your team. Because it's not about it's not the athleticism or whatever that, that surprise you. It's what they do with the ball. And when they get the ball, all right, boom, up the court. You see that? Yeah. Right? Okay. So here we go. Another opportunity. He's there, gets the ball, and he's up the fucking court before yeah. anything else happens. Like, that's... Head I mean, up, he's a dead sprint, off. bro. Right, yeah. Like, again, that's knowledge. He knows that if he gets up the court, look at, boom, he's ahead of two guys already. Yeah. You know, like, every single rebound, it's, boom, steps. Right. And, dude, and that's why he has understanding for the game. You look at it, and you're like, okay, this guy is ready. Now, pull up his three-point shot that he hits, because this is another amazing shot and amazing discipline by him and understanding when to take the shot and when to pass it up because right at this point he's already what uh one for five or one for three or whatever from the three-point line he gets the ball at the, i think the top of the key right looks everybody leaves him open comes he's back towing the line bro boom deep three. he's he but look at how he drive play it again because he drives to the hole and he passes the ball right right and he doesn't take himself out of the play. What he does is he steps in between the guards or the uh, defenders. Watch him. Drive to the hole. Pass. Boom. And then he backs up two steps, right? And then he comes in as between the two defenders. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Every time, man. Like, that's the type of play that you see and you're like, he gets it. Yeah, dude. Because. For sure. <laughs> If you don't need to sit there and teach this kid how to do all these basic stuff like, hey, listen, your defender is going to be turning his back towards you, and you could take a sidestep to your left, like a high, even half a sidestep, make it impossible for him to block your three-point shot. And what does he do? He does that. Like, that's yeah. not something you can teach. He just gets it. And and that's what makes me excited about the way that he plays and the way that he understands the game is knowledge for the game. It's, it's next level, and it's why I get excited about – Watching Jang, I get excited about, you know, these players playing with Jang is because he's a special player. And Kendrick Williams, man, I'm so glad you pulled him up because he scored a bunch, right? Yeah. I think eight points, but all of them were, were in a bunches. Well, and you, you, you know? said you said moving, he knows how to move, like talking about Jang. And that, I mean, moving oh, yeah. without the ball, that's what Kenny does, dude. Yeah. And, and you can see it like with, with Kenny. Okay. All right. Freeze it right there. All right. 
go back just slightly. Okay, here we go. Trey Man driving. Now, look at this, though. Kenny's at the elbow, but if he had gone anytime sooner, right, it, the ball gets stopped, right? He waits just long enough, and boom. Yeah, and that's the thing. He accelerates at the right time, and, they, and everybody understands in sports. It's the it's delay. All about change of speed, change of direction, right? That's how you create opportunities, and that's what he does. He's always changing speed, he's changing direction, and he's moving to the open spot. That's, that's the, it. And that's why he's him and Josh Giddy have such a great relationship out there on the court is because he refuses to like give up on a play. He he's thinking about what the other guy is seeing, and he understands. Okay, if I move to the open spot at this critical moment, not before, right, but right at the right time, I'm going to find the open spot. I'm yeah. going to become an outlet for my man. The thing is, what Kenny does that's so great is he understands the difference between like a cut to an open spot and a cut to an open spot in front of the basket. And that's that's why him and Josh oh, yeah. have such a great connection is because it's it's critical. Man, I want to pull up uh, somebody that we don't get enough love to, um, and that's Wiggins, man. Go ahead and pull up Aaron Wiggins. I don't know, three-point shot. Uh, he does has three offensive rebounds as well in this game. Phenomenal game by him, but let's go with, uh, yeah, this one's great right here. Jay Williams, Jalen Williams got the assist right here. Great job for with him understanding what's up. It was J-Dub, wasn't it, the assist? I can't answer you on that one because I, was, I wasn't looking. Well, it, it looks like they might have uh, got the wrong one there. But look at where Josh Wiggins goes. Josh Wiggins. Aaron Wiggins goes, man. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Is he understands. Boom. Number six, Jalen. J-Dub's got the ball. He's in between the the defender right there. It's a beautiful, beautiful shot. I mean, beautiful shot. So Wiggins, again, look, look at Jalen Williams is truly spectacular at passing the ball. Those one-handed flicks that he does, man. Yeah. Across court. I mean, it's, yeah. it's sick, man. And that's the person that he's going to be able to hook up the most with was is Aaron Wiggins because another person that fills the spots really well, like – uh, Kenny Hustle, man. Right. You know, like and, he understands spacing at such an elite level. It's really incredible seeing him and Kenny Hustle on the floor because when Trey Mann's on the floor playing point guard with Kenny Hustle and Aaron Wiggins, you see some beautiful assists. And I think Trey Mann had only a couple assists that went in, but let's pull up some Trey Mann assists because, like, this was crazy, man. Some of the way that he was able to connect and understand – um where the guy's cutting and where the guy's going to be at. I think we have one with uh, Kenny Hustle where he cuts from the elbow and cuts down. It's one of them. Um, so here we go. Uh, obviously, we here we go. Here's the elbow cut. Ago. Boom. Yeah. We just watched that one. There's one more okay. assist right here from Trey Man. All right. And this is great because sec second half right here. The Poku Boom. three. Poku. All right. Yeah. He watched Poku come down. He was able to get in the ball where Poku loves the ball the most. Like I feel like Poku hits most of his shots right there, um, or most of his shots that he hits are from right there. I should say. Yeah. Um, so with that being said, is like you know we looked at Baisley last night. I felt like he had a, a hard hard night, and that was. I wrote down. I want to say what I wrote about Baisley because uh, it's right. really why you do that, uh, bro. While you pull that up, I am going to cue J Dub for, um, scoring highlights. All right, cool. You want you want to go about Baisley first, though. You go first. No, J Dub is just phenomenal. I mean, look look at this look at the separation he created just before he gets down. I gotta say, him out there, right there, and you can tell he's a couple years older than some of these guys, but he looks like. I mean, look at the size difference, man, against his man. Yeah, I mean, I noticed that right away when he was out there. He but he, he looks like but look he's behind closer him. to six look at nine. Wiggins. Just but look at on, Wiggins like, behind him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, he still he looks, looks small. Again. And then there's Bones right behind him. Yeah. Like they all look small compared to J um, J Dub, bro. All look small. But he just flies right over past people him. with contact. Yeah. It's uncanny. His, for his dunk that his he did age. was amazing. But he's young. And that's the thing that's hard to remember because he already so looks like a professional. He's been a professional for a long time. He really does. It's it's goddamn what, what impossible to remember. What Kenny Hustle said about him. 
What Kenny what Hustle say? said about him was truly spectacular. He said that Kenny Hustle said, J Dub is a future All Star, multi year All Star. Really? Yeah. And and, and it, watching J Dub on um, play last night, like I don't doubt it. I he's this a point guard. Average, he's going to average twenty plus points a game multiple times in his career. He's a I point mean, he guard. He could he could be a, a, a year number two, averaging twenty player on um, points a game. That's how good he, he is. He's like a but, six foot six, six foot seven point guard, but has a wingspan of somebody who's like six foot nine, a shoulder width of somebody who's who's taller, has the athleticism of somebody who can just hang in the air all day long. All day long. Oh, and by the way, in our system, we're going to be asking him to get downhill, get to the basket, and let his passing shine. Like, yep. whoa, what else do you so want? Beautiful. Like, it's perfect. I, how long can we bring him off the bench for real, dude? How long? Yeah. All right. You're right, man. Do you think it will be a long time we can bring him off the bench, or do you think we'll dude. have to bring him to the starting lineup fast? You're going to have to bring him the starting lineup. I, I think this is, uh, this team is designed to have a fourth guard on the floor, and he's a perfect fourth guard. He's big. Right. He can hold himself against small forwards, even power forwards if he needs to. Mm -hmm. I Listen, I, I think he's the future uh, fourth guard with Chet on the floor. Man, let's uh, pull up Baisley's uh, block shot, man. All right, bro. He had two assists, but his block shot, I felt like, was really just kind of showing what I'm, I'm hoping Baisley will do um, this year is a better job at understanding where he needs to be. Look at, boom. Okay. Comes down the lane. He's there. And then he just f trails it right there. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, he gets out of place, and then he gets back into place really quickly. Yeah, and that's what you know. What Wiggins was a big part of that play too. He was able to slide his feet, get his hips squared up, which is a tough thing to do because it didn't look like he was going to be the primary defender. But Bones, Bones is legit, dude. I really oh, yeah. like Bones Highland, his explosiveness, and he's like, he's that gamer. He's that guy oh, you want to come absolutely. off your bench. That's like a spark plug that will just like fuck everything up, you know? Yep. And and what I've been saying about Baisley and what I wrote at about him during this game was Baisley is making great plays and using his brain with bad results. It's like his luck meter is fucking broken. Yeah, dude, I, I agree with that. It was, it's like, you know how people press when they realize that they're like, they need to play well to yes. ensure a spot on a team. That's where yes. he was at. Exactly. And that's why I'm not too frustrated about that. I, I'm cool with it. You know, like, you know, just watching how the, 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 the game develops, you know, watching Jang, J-Dub, J-Will, Baisley, and Wiggins, uh, J-Dub playing point guard there, um, closing out that third quarter, man. That was beautiful, bro. Like, All right, we, so we I'm going to show you I some think... highlights real quick. But I'll let you go first because I cut you off. Dude. Oh, JRE with the giddy assist. Yeah. Um, but, like, to me, like, this is just, again, with this team – like there's so many young players that are such unknown um, 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 assets right now, and and uh, equally being with that is we have so many sophomores that we know how they can play, and we just want to see how good they can be, right? Yeah, yeah. So you look at Josh Giddy, you look at JRE, you look at Trey Mann, you look at these these Aaron Wiggins, and then you look at our second group of guys, J um, J Dub, Jang, uh, J Will. Uh, and, and Chet, we want to see how these guys play and maintain that that professional habit together. But our second year guys, man, the type of improvement I've seen in this one game and uh, summer league games is truly spectacular. JRE is going to be a menace to society this year. I'm telling you right now, guys, he's going to be one of those guys that people are going to take a step back and be like, "What the fuck?" Right? Because well, the Nuggets were doing it, they're like, this. oh, he'd Jang's, be a great backup uh, five or a starting four. Like, the Nuggets announcers were like, yeah, they're, they're salivating, and he didn't really even show much last night. You're right. And, and if you think about when we, we have out there, we have Poku, right? We have J-Dub together, J-Will, and Baisley all at one time out there together. You know, Ford heavy. But you see this right here. You got, you got Poku right here. You got JRE. Who's got the ball, Mark? Giddy's got Josh it. Giddy downhill, right? Okay, so he's uh, J, um, JRE is making it clear he's about to come set a screen. Okay, and this is what I love about JRE and the way that we're running our offense is that what I call the ghost screen. But go ahead and push play, Mark, on this. All right. By the way, we're gonna let him play through. This is 
all nine of Josh Giddey's assists. So oh, great, you're sweet. Track. We'll talk about them all. Here we go. Boom. The ghost. The ghost uh, screen right there, man. I love it. Finish right. the contact for JRE. Big time play. Um, all right, so we got Giddy on the break. He loves getting out there into the open spot, and then one hand bounce pass to once again JRE for a dunk this time. That's gonna that's, be that's such one of the best passes connection. I've seen in a long time. Well, since Josh Giddy played last, right? And I just don't know why Baisley didn't go up right away. Here, with I'm him. gonna pause this real quick and just talk about like um, with it's playing with Giddy. Something that somebody said with. Um, you know, talking about NBL, I'm sorry, a, um, the AFL, Australian yeah. football, um, footy as we call it, right? Like, he said that you're supposed to pass the ball to open space because an uncontested pass is a better pass than a contested pass. And, but because footy has such a big, bigger field, like it's bigger than the gridiron field of American cool. football, right? And it's, got such a big field, there's a lot more open space. So moving to open space is really critical. And when you have a point guard who likes to dribble the shit out of the ball, it's almost like you have to go to him to get the ball a lot of times. Mm. But with Giddy, if you want the ball, what you'll see here and what we've already noticed a few times is you go to the open space and Giddy will lead you. He'll know you're open more than you do. So move to the open space and in doing that, there's opportunities, right? Sometimes you don't even know you're open until he picks up his dribble, but that's not yeah. a dead ball move, even though he is, I mean, the ball is dead. The, the space is so tight, though. Think about this. Space. Right. You know, like, I, boom. I remember when I was coaching, I always had trouble with players. I would say, you know, like, a defense will set up, right? And then you'll have your offense, and the offensive player will move, and they'll think, well, okay, we need to do this for the offensive set. We need to move to where the defense is. I'm like, no, True. move to the open spot. The ball will find you at the open spot. But, you know, you're, you're coaching kids, and it's almost like they think um, it's like baseball where, like, that that's a base, and you have to go stand there on the base next to the other person, and then we're going to throw the ball. Sure. So many contested balls. But anyway, my point is Josh Giddy is always moving the ball to the open spot. That's the key. And it doesn't mean he's not going to have turnovers, right? But, like, you can handle turnovers when people are making mistakes in the, doing the right aggressive moves, right? That's the key. Keep your hands yeah, ready because the ball is going to find you. Yeah, and if you look at the way that these – the top-tier teams in the NBA are designed, uh, we're going to be a lot of teams' kryptonites because we go downhill, we drive hard, and we dish the ball for wide-open threes. And yeah. we play defense. At a very high level. So a lot of these teams that are going to be playing against us aren't going to be ready for it. And and I think it's just going to be one of those things where it's just going to be like, okay, this is what they can do without Shea. This is what they can do with Shea. Oh, and this is what they can do with Chet. You know, like, I, I listen, people are stoked about Victor like, like he should be. But if there's one person that could stop him in the league or will be in the league in the NBA, it's Chet. Yeah. You know, like that, that's going to be his kryptonite. So we're talking about kryptonite out here. Like the reality is this team is designed for that. And if you look at the way that we played even last night with coach D and how he's been able to get motivate these guys, like I saw 90 second increments where we didn't play well. Yeah. But it wasn't like three or four minutes. Like we saw last year, the year before it was 90 seconds. Boom. Snapped out of it. And typically it was, it was generated by, a substitution that he made, you know, yeah. and, and, and seeing that I was, I was really fucking impressed with the way that coach D play or uh, coach last night or night, uh, two nights ago. Like, listen, I totally get it. And I totally respect the, those people out there that are saying it's only a summer league game. It's only preseason. I get that, but good coaching is good fucking coaching. Like you can't disguise like even preseason when a team has a bad coach, you can't disguise that. You can watch a team play and say that that they have a shitty ass motherfucking coach. Yeah. Coach D, Coach Dagnot is for real, bro. Like yeah. he is a premier coach in the league, and it is gonna be on fleek this next year for sure. All right, man. I agree, dude. We got some Trey Man three pointer highlights here. He was scoring all sorts of different ways, but his shot from behind the arc looked as good as I've ever seen it. Hmm. Last year. He showed the capacity to do great things in short spurts. The question is, 
can it become more consistent? And without once again getting too excited over a preseason game, I saw him going into things that he did. He does really well, a lot faster, a lot smoother, and he looks bigger to me. He looks like he's continued to grow. That was sure. something he kind of alluded to that he might still be growing when we drafted him. What do you think, bro? Oh, yeah. I think he's put on at least an inch, maybe an inch and a half, if not more, because you see him next to Zhang, and Zhang is a legit 6'10". Yeah. And, you know, like, he does not look like four inches shorter than him. So I think there is definitely an opportunity that, that he did grow there. And I'm excited about that because let's just put it out there. Trey Mann, to me, is one of those wild cards. If he turns out to be as good as we think he could be, you know, like, yeah. Again, we're talking about one of the most solid def or, um, bench teams in the league, and all of a sudden adding these pieces, like we're not going to have enough space for them. And I love that. So here we are going to watch a couple of Josh Giddy threes. He made both of oh. them, bro. And there's been a it's lot so of talk sick. about this new coach, Chip England. And I don't think I can see anything that's different about Giddy's shot, but. Yes. Other than it went yes. in. So much, bro. <laughs> like, it, two it, the balls, man, for two. There's no, we'll take there's, it. All right, listen. Remember his shot last year where we were like, there's like a hitch in it almost? Like he's going up and it's like, it was like almost a pause, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there's nothing here, bro. Like it's, oh, man, go back. Just go back. Like go slow. <laughs> can you go slow? I don't think you can go slow-mo. <laughs> but if you could, you'd, I would want to see this in slow-mo because of the way that like he goes up and what I noticed there was no there was no hitch, there was no like anything like that. It was just pure like just beautiful movement. Nothing. Nobody's coming. It's like he's, he's been that. working with his mom a bit. Look at too. that, bro. She's and he's shooting. he squared up. He follows through. Yeah, bro. But, his shots his shot is looking beautiful. Like this is this is and it's, tr all it's this true hard work. transition. Right. Yeah. And he doesn't take his, I mean, he, it's a quick shot, man. That's not a slow shot. Yeah. Well. It's not like Kevin Kevin Garnett taking a shot, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a lot to be excited about, bro. Like, oh, like a lot. so exciting. And one of those things that we really like to get pumped up about, bro, is Lindy Waters. Um, speaking that, of smooth kid, shots, smooth, you know, we talk about Giddy so far. We're talking about Trey Mann. You know, knocking down shots. But here's Lindy Waters out there just really giving everybody in Oklahoma something to be proud of. What a pure shot. And then he comes back and he knocks one down from, like, the exact same place and the exact same play. Like, they're like, we're not going to take you seriously. I mean, those shots won us the game, shot. bro. It's a pure shot. Like, I know we hey. won by more than that, but they, they were, like, so going to give us a, a, a legit contest, you know? Give you guys, uh, you know, all your listeners from Australia that are in New Zealand that are listening to us and all over the world, Lindy Waters from the Oklahoma City Thunder, he played with Trey Mann, or Trey Mann. He played with Trey, uh, Young. Trey Young in high school. All right, yeah. guys. Um, we got a bunch of video of them playing together out there. Uh, they looked great together, and you can see the shooting mechanics are there for Lindy Waters. Um, and I, I want to ask, too, uh, I know we have a lot of listeners out there from Oklahoma um, somebody get in touch with us. Uh, they talked about uh, where Lindy Waters uh, grew up in the area that he grew up and also um, what Native American tribe he belongs to. I would love to know more information about that uh, because the way that he plays and the way that he hustles, I, I get really, really excited about uh, what he can do as an individual. And I really hope that he's going to be on this team for a lot longer. And, you know, as the process goes, like I like to know more and more about these informations. I, I I know that he went to uh, more as in high school and stuff like that, but I don't know where he went in grade school or anything else. Yeah, like it was that. actually I know, okay. he was at Norman. I think Norman North. For oh, Norman North. I'm sorry, yeah. you're right. Um, so again, like I, I'm one of those guys that just like to know the history of each of these players. And if you guys have any information on Lindy Waters, I would love to know about it. So reach out to us. Right on, man. And this is um, some highlights here of Josh Giddy's all of his buckets. And then we're, we're going to go ahead and call it. We have so much more to talk about, but we have, we got to move past the thunder. So <laughs> <laughs> this is all of his um, shots. So you're going to see a couple of the shots that you already saw his three point makes, but I think it's just impressive. His variety of shot making ability. This was a really a great game for him. I feel like he, 
with everything that's happened this summer, it's become once again apparent that he's going to have to step up in a different way. Um, well, that was just two shots there, so I'm not exactly sure what happened to the rest. But like, let's face it, like he is, we're benefiting from all of his um, work, hard work yep. over the summer, but also the experience that he's put in from last year. Yeah. Like you can see, like he understands when he has the um, defender at a disadvantage and he knows what to do this year coming into the season. I felt like last year, um, ex like when you watch him, like he would get out there and it's, the first thing he would do is be like, get the ball and pound it in, the rock in and try to go as fast as he could. And just always trying to create tempo, right? Yeah. This year he knows when he has the step or not. And then he, hmm. he goes and he uses that same aggression, but he knows when. I think that's one of the biggest things that you see about him. And then all of a sudden you mix in the fact that like J dub is where he's at. I, I think we already have our, like, I, I was like, man, it's, it's tough to see Teo Maladon go. I wish we were going to keep him, but I, J dub took his spot, bro. There he was did. like, he pushed everything around and now we're looking at it. We're like, I don't, I don't even, maybe I'm wrong about who took whose spot, but in the end, J dub has me so excited about that second point guard role. I, I mean, I, it's incredible. He's, he, he's really good. Yeah. And, and before we get going anywhere else, I just want to talk about Kenny hustle effect real fast. We watch bodies hit the floor all fucking night guys, taking charges, guys trying to take charges, Trey man's on the floor, taking a charge and got called for a non-charge. Listen, this is not a coincidence. All right. This is going to be seen all over the NBA, a whole lot more. The charge is becoming more part of the game, and that's why when we see Kenny Hustle teach his guys how to do this, it's important to have somebody like Jay Will, who is probably the greatest charge taker in college history, in college basketball history. So I look at this and I say, this is going to be exciting watching this team because we're going to cause so many teams such massive fucking headaches. Uh, we're going to frustrate fans like they're like nobody's business because what we do is we're like a little fucking cockroach and we just crawl right into some area and we just have babies everywhere and we're going to fuck up teams right and left this year. And if anybody thinks that we're not going to win 30 games, you just guys don't understand really where we're at right now. And I'm glad you pulled this up because this is how Mark and I played basketball when we were growing up. All right, man. Oh, well, bully ball, bully ball right here, man. Mark would be talking shit to me as a smaller guy. Mad shit. Get me a little pissed off. Right. And I'm like, stop it. All right, that's it, motherfucker. You're going down. <laughs> yep. Every that time, bro. It. You know what I'm saying? That was about it, man. That's it, man. Mark <laughs> you, would be beating, beating up me, on your what, brother like, and feeling like Shaq. Four nothing, five nothing in a game to eleven, and I would just start beating you up, and then I would end up winning. So. <laughs> That's that's the truth, man. And look, that's I feel, what people are going to try to do the Thunder, Thunder, you know. But that's what they're going to try to do the Thunder. Yeah, they're going to be like, it, "Oh, dude. you're young. We're going to bully you." But we got guys with skills, man, and we're going to be fucking them up. They don't know it, man. They don't know it yet. Because, we're going to be coming at them from all angles. Yeah, they're still looking at us and saying, "Oh, they're young." Well, we're ready to fight, bro. We are ready to fucking fight, dude.